Skipper Roger Noel and his crew are working the fishing grounds off the Isles of Scilly. When we get further towards uh, lands in, it might get a little worse, so be prepared. Fishing's the most dangerous job in the country, seven times more hazardous than mining. Home port of Newlyn in Cornwall is 100 miles away. The forecast is for more storms. Each time I come around here in this weather, I always ask old pal to look after us up aloft. And, uh, and if truth be known, everybody else have done the same at one time or another. I can assure you that. They might not say it, might not say it, but I know it. Because that lot out there coming on us now, you fear it and respect at the same time. Larry I got involved in that tap on the pier. He said, uh, well, I'm from the BBC. He said, but we're thinking about doing a documentary. Would you be interested? And I thought, well, I don't mind for a couple of hours or whatever it was going to be. And then, what was it, a year or more later? This is the worst of it, not knowing who's there. Everybody used to say, well, why did they pick you? I said, well, I'll tell you why they picked me. Because they got so far down in the barrel, and they got to the bottom, and they were scraping around. And he went, oh, look, Roger will do that. And that was, that was, and I used to say that. But that was a bit of fun, you know what I mean? It's a bit of fun. For 10 days at a time, the 93-foot trawler, William Sampson Stevenson, is home for Roger and the crew. Well, here we are on the William Sampson. We're aboard a little old tiger here. As I call her, I call her a tiger. Six crew, there's five of them and myself. We've got Peter, the mate on the ship. What's going on here? All the petty food, eh? Oh, She's been on the diet now for six years. <laughs> and nothing seems to happen, like, you know? The waistbands get wider in here. That was, that was, that's Peter. And uh, Graham, well, he's the engineer. So I've gone into the fry-ups at the moment. As you see, put on a lot of weight. So, uh, he's a great Leeds United supporter, is he? There are times, like, you know, when I, if I might shout down, hello, it's all in time, he'll turn around and say, we can't yet, because the football haven't finished, you know? Now, Jiggy. I'm going to have a nice apple. Apple a day keeps the doctor away. You know, I've been with Jiggy 30 years. In the last couple of years, we've had, we've noticed a little deterioration with Jiggy. Well, we wonder whether it was old age setting in, but apparently he found out that he had diabetes, and now he's got it under control. It's perfectly, you know, full of fun again, you know. The chief catering officer, Tony. Tony's been here now with us 12 months. He was dismissed. <laughs> from uh, his last ship, but he's okay. My wife won't let me in the kitchen. I need to make coffee. Bobby, he's the eldest, 63 or four. Aggravated man at times. Oh, I'm a very slight eater, man. I don't need to He likes to finish his meal and then we'll haul. Well, we get along quite fine. That's a, that's a rundown on the gang in here, you know? What about the skipper? Oh, the skipper, well, now nah, that's something else. The years I was aboard with Bobby and Jiggy and Peter and, and Graham, they're like little family. And at the end of the day, if you're living with them for three parts of the year, they are family. Because you're longer with them and what you are with your family is sure. Bloody good job, Bill. To cover the boat's running costs, the owner expects results, whatever the weather. Two days into the 10-day trip, it's not going well. The worst part of this lot is, you know you've got to face there eight or nine days. Of course, you're going to have half the fishing because the weather is very poor. And you've got to face eight or nine days now of, say, a four, seven or eight. I've got to throw my hands and knees here. Ah, uh, very poor, very poor. Oh, very, very poor. Of course, if we don't catch any fish, we don't get paid. 
Then the crew aren't very happy. And Stevens and the owner, he's not very happy. We've got to find the stuff before we have any money, is he? And if there's no fish, there's no money. There's a wonder there's any fish here at all. 25 or 30 years ago, you'd have like nice fish and the debris that you used to have off the bottom was just like shells and a little bit of mud and the old stone and that. But now you get like plastic bags, plastic beakers. And the seabed must be covered with them. You get into May, June and July and those months are very slack because the, fi the fish have uh, dispersed after they've gone to their their action area, they 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 disperse. Now you're then scraping, and probably some of the the um, the holes that you saw on the um, the program, you would think, well, that's not a lot there. Fog, look, just look. Can't see a thing now. Not a thing. There you are. We got right within a quarter mile from the arbor when we had a pea super thick fog. When you can't see the barrel of the boat. The William Sampson's ice room can hold 20 tons of fish. Today, just two tons will go for auction. They'll be lucky to cover the owner's costs. Over. I'll be 10 minutes, OK? Oh. Well, we're in Stevenson's office in Newland. And if you look around here, up here, you see the boats. And here's the old tiger, look. 191 William Sampson. Okay. Thank you. Now, we've got a problem. Nothing unusual. Well, apart from that, small engine, chromo, smashed up. Going to take 24 hours. So, we're going to have a fix her up and then have a look at it again tomorrow. Are they Part's got to come from Holland, or I've made well, do it. Well, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. And how's that dad of yours? How's his 80 birth? You all right? It was good. Mm -hmm. It was good. All right. Yeah, we had a bit of a do here. We had some drink and some chocolate cake. Do you know what you've been telling me for the last... The old banner. Happy do, you know, birthday. do you know what you've been telling me for the last 20 years? What's that? Or more than that. Only 20. <laughs> well, <laughs> you used to say to me, I'm going away next week on a QE2. And it'll be my last. And it'll be my last. And I won't be back. That's correct. Roger's been here as long as I have. He's always been part of the furniture. He was a good skipper. Uh, he used to spend quite a bit of time at sea. He wasn't one of the skippers that always came in when the weather was just a little bit changeable. He used to sort of hang out there for a bit. How long are we going to be, do you think? Well, with a bit of luck, it could be tomorrow. What, midday or afternoon? He doesn't like being told what to do. He hates rules and regulations and will do everything in his power to avoid being told what to do. <laughs> That's for grandchildren. Yes, I know that. <laughs> Fishermen like Roger rarely see their families. Last year, he spent over 300 days at sea less than 60 at home. Tonight is an unexpected bonus for seven-year-old daughter Sophie and wife Nell. No, 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 not backwards. No. Only when you can jump with the king back, you know? Do you know your old dad was coming in yesterday? No. No, he didn't, did you? Mum, he didn't tell you, did you? Sometimes I think you're in the car. Ah, do you? Only when you come out of school? Yeah. Do you? <laughs> 